Hello everybody, uh, Dr. Rick, checking in on you one more time. Uh, hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you had a great week. Hope that things are working out for you and hope that you have the resolve to keep pushing. Uh, look, it's another Riding with Rick episode. Uh, we're going to talk about something that is real serious. Um, but definitely something that we've got to address and we've got to be more willing to address. Uh, if you like what you hear doing this, if you um, think that it's something that's meaningful, like it, share it. And if you are not a subscriber, subscribe. Look, you hear me often talking about the different elephants in the room and one of the elephants that I've consistently talked about has been childhood sexual abuse and incest in the black home and the unwillingness to acknowledge it, address it, i.e. the elephant in the room um, is a problem because it's traced back generations. It is ignored and pushed aside. Oftentimes the victim is villainized and alienated from the family while the perpetrator is protected and, and given solace within the family and the community, even when people know. I can't tell you uh, something that should have been an anomaly in my community growing up, how many people I saw where the, the young teenage girl giving birth was giving birth to her son and her little brother simultaneously or her son and her nephew uh, simultaneously um, it is crazy to look back and think about the conversations you used to hear the adults talking about you know while you you know eavesdropping and some of the conversations that were being had but nobody was really taking action um, and how it just seemed to be a part of the community dynamic and no one addressed the long-term implications of what was going on uh, when uh, of 20 years ago uh, in, in meeting and treating and dealing with the black females I came into or stumble upon a phenomenon that literally launched me deeper into this. And it was the fact that easily 80% of the women that were coming to me were coming to me. And as we peeled back the layers and started to delve deeply into uh, what was going on with them, it, it ended up so often in childhood sexual abuse uh, in incest and molestation and these type of things and so I endeavored to find out if it was a situation that was universal or it just so happened some crazy phenomenon drew those women to me and it turns out that many of my colleagues were experiencing the same thing and so we pushed for more extant and update data on that specifically and we found out that on a conservative level 40 percent of black women in america experience childhood sexual abuse and on a more liberal level 60 percent what we don't like talking about and what makes us even more uncomfortable than um childhood sexual abuse of our baby girls is childhood sexual abuse of our little boys in that same study in my in my research of uncovering what was going on and looking at it and then determining the best route of confronting it i discovered that um one in eight boys black boys are molested one in eight and that number is more than likely high because we also discovered in our research that males are less likely to report so there are a bunch of them that haven't ever told their story haven't ever come out and said anything about it and the reason that i'm addressing this is a friend of mine tony Lindsay 
uh, sent me a clip of Angela Yee interviewing Sean T. If you don't know who Sean T is, Sean T is a former dancer who actually became popular when he transitioned into the uh, world of fitness and he created P90X. And when he created P90X, it blew up at the time and there were all these videos and all this stuff that was going on. Um, and he became a household name for a while. Well, anyway, she was interviewing him and he uh, was talking about the fact that for years he his now this is going to get a little graphic so you need to be aware of this uh, because the point needs to be made and and uh, we need to talk about it he said that for years his stepfather would molest him he would come home drunk and go down, you know, the bed, master bedroom was downstairs. He would go down there and argue with the mom, come upstairs and turn the light on in the bathroom, which would make it seem like he's in the bathroom, and would come in and molest him via oral sex. So his father was performing oral, his stepfather was performing oral sex on him. And Angela Lee, Angela Yee asked him a very probing question and he answered it openly. She said, so how did it stop? And he said, it stopped the, the first time that I was actually able to have an orgasm. Um, and so that was, I guess, a turnoff to him because now, you know, that was that going on you can you can picture it and you can draw your conclusions but that was the thing he said so then he stopped but the crazy thing that he talked about and I give him credit for being willing to talk about this because this type of stuff isn't easy um, but he said that for a long time he felt abandoned he felt that he felt special because his stepfather had told him you know, this is saving your mom because he would want to beat on the mom, but that's how he uh, convinced Sean that, you know, when you let me do this, I won't beat on your mom. If you let me do this, I won't do it to your brother. So in his mind, he was protecting his family. He's a little kid, under, I think he was under nine or 10 uh, when all this is going on. This is all going on. And he's talking about it and he's saying that literally he felt like he was the prince and the protector of his family and that he was special to his stepdad and that when his stepdad stopped doing that he felt abandoned and he felt cheapened uh and he felt lost and and imagine that age and not having anyone to help you process what happened to you is sick and then it's catastrophically devastating on a mental and emotional level in ways the average person will never understand. And this is happening more often than you realize. And we aren't talking about it. We aren't confronting it. We aren't looking. We, will, we love to kick black men. We love to kick the shit out of black men. You know, we talk about all the stuff that black men don't do right and we never examine what caused them to change black men aren't born murderers black men aren't born trifling black men aren't born angry and explosive black men aren't born overly sexualized so then you have to say if they're operating outside the normal scope of what they are genetically and biologically and neurobiologically driven to do, what is the causality? We we don't want to explore it. We don't want to talk about it because it's ugly. Because then we got to talk about what Uncle Joe was doing, what Daddy was doing, what Papa was doing. And then let's not forget, a lot of these boys were molested by women. 
And we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about the sickness in the community, the sickness in the home and how it's harming the children. And I have been doing these epigenetic symposiums and conferences and lectures and all of this stuff. And, uh, you know, I just got contacted. There's a, a organization out of Sacramento. Look, I'm going to be spending some time in Sacramento uh, in the coming months, helping them with a study and things that are going on there. And I've been doing all this and I've been trying to get people to understand the connections and how things are perpetuated and how we, anytime there's a event or a behavior or a situation that is beyond what we call statistical significance, then there has to be an explanation for the event, for the occurrence, for the behavior. So this statistical significance is simply something that is happening at a rate, a pace or percentage that is beyond what can be considered coincidence. In other words, it can't be arbitrary. It can't be an anomaly. It has to be something happening at a level where you're going, this has to be explained. And when you're talking about one in eight, and it's actually higher than that because we know little boys don't produce, we're probably talking about double that. So we're probably talking about more like one in four. Now you're talking about uh, at least at, at least close to half or more of what we're saying happening is happening to our daughters. That's significant because the ones who are supposed to grow up and protect our daughters are experiencing the same harm, hurt, and devastation that our daughters. And we're expecting these kids to grow up and do exceptional things. We're expecting them to grow up and be pro-social. We're expecting them to grow up and have normal, productive lives. And we are not examining the force at which things are happening. It's absolutely imperative that we do something about this. It's absolutely imperative that we stop pretending it's not happening. It's time to address the elephant in the room. You know, again, I want to commend uh, Shanti and all others who are willing to come out and speak up about that type of trauma in their lives, that type of occurrence in their lives, and the guilt and the frustration and the confusion and all of the other things that play out in their lives that you know, no one wants to hear. You cannot solve a problem pretending it does not exist. Look, we're going to be having these conversations. We're going to be having real hard conversations about things that matter, things that if we properly address it, things change. It's time to stop playing on the surface. It's time to stop uh, going through escapism. It's time to stop looking to be entertained so that we don't have to face reality. It's time to stop finger pointing and look within. It's time to deal with the enemy on the inside. You know one of my favorite quotes. If there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do you no harm. It's time to start dealing with the enemy on the inside on so many levels. So that's my challenge. It's time to start doing that. Um, I want you to chime in. I want you to share your stories. This is a no judgment zone. So if I catch you being mean and judging people for anything that they're going through or for anything that, that they've experienced, you will be blocked on this channel. Uh, I'm all for opinions. I'm all for people sharing, but this is going to be a judgment free zone. This is going to be a place where people can show up and put their feelings out there and share where they're at and share what they're going through and not be judged. This is going to be a place of healing, period. So with that being said, uh, leave your comments, share, talk about it. It's time to dig in. On that note, Look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Also, if you believe in the work we do, which it entails childhood sexual abuse, entails domestic violence, entails intimate partner violence and homicide, entails proper racial socialization and the development of black boys so that they can become strong black men, entails uh, many other programs, including our research and development department. We have a research center. 
where we conducted thousands upon thousands upon thousands of uh, hours of little scientific research into the things that we face in the black community so that we can create solutions that take us to new heights. But we do need support. So if you believe in what we're doing, time to show up, time to help, time to stop playing around. Look in the description box, see the ways that you can give and support our work. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for letting me borrow your time.